Hello, welcome to match day 43 of Championship Predictions from the Honest Sports Podcast. I'm Craig Sarge and with me as always is Daniel Cody and Charlie Betts. Let's have a quick recap of what we did from the weekend. And there was only a total of 12 points out of 12 games with all three of us. Two of them were perfect scores. Mine was Reading versus Cardiff, which ended one all, and Daniel Cody's only three points were for Brentford versus Mill, which ended goalless. But I went overall with six points to the three. So the table looks like this. I'm on 312 with 54 perfect scores. Daniel Cody's on 289 with 47 perfect scores. And Charlie Betts is on 261 with 35 perfect scores. So this is the final midweek of full set of fixtures in the championship this season. And we're starting off with Brentford versus Cardiff. Daniel Cody, Cardiff, since Mick McCarthy's taken over permanently, they haven't really done well. No, they, they had a, a fairly good start. And then it just... It drifted away, and I guess that can be said for a lot of sides. I mean, we talked about Bristol City more recently. That's happened with them as well. For Cardiff, four games without a win now. In fact, their only win was the derby in the last six. Brentford, I mean, I'm glad it's the one thing I did nail, which is after loads of draws in a row, the win against Preston, they're back to drawing ways. And based on their recent results, I've got to go for the same again. It's just what score. Championship's favourite scoreline. I can't see Brentford drawing two blanks in a row. Charlie? Yeah, I have to agree with Danny's nicked my score annoyingly. Um, I don't know. I mean, Cardiff started obviously so well under Mick McCarthy, but Brentford have drawn the last three at home. So, you know, the, the betting man would go for a draw. But I think people are uh, focusing a bit more on Bournemouth, a bit more on Barnsley. Brentford might sneak one under the radar. For me, Cardiff not really got much to play for, so Brentford might just nick it by two goals to one. I'm going to go one higher. I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. Brentford that just, they've gone off the boil, draws are not good enough. If you really want to be perfect, they're not good enough. Cardiff, also, I've gone off the ball as well. Just they have not been impressive. And, and he, even he's saying his spell mode has not been successful. But if he gets a good pre season with the right signings, I think they could be up there next summer. But I'm going to go for a 2 2 draw. Up next, it is first versus second. It's promoted Norwich City. Congratulations to them. They are playing Watford, who lost in the derby to Luton on Saturday. Daniel Cody. Watford losing that game is not ideal considering the running they've got. It's not. And I think more worryingly than the result is the performance, to be honest. It was just, I mean, I think a few of the players have said it themselves. Tom Cleverley came out and said it afterwards. It was a pretty abject display from them. Not really what we expected. But then Norwich weren't a huge amount better, to be honest. So there, there's concerns from both fronts. Norwich obviously already up because of the other results. But this is the chance for them to wrap up the title. And I actually think, I mean, a draw's a good result for them, isn't it? Watford have to win if they want any chance of winning it. Do you know what? I think Norwich will nick it because Watford are going to have to come out to try and win the title. So I'm going to go for 2-1 to Norwich because Watford, they've not been great on the road for most of the season. Sorry. Yeah, I agree with what Dan's saying. I do think we mentioned it about the lack of goals for Watford and that was showed again. On the whole, I know I know it was obviously pretty abject as, as was described, but they have been very good with late Watford. I, I put that down to a blip, an off day. I think I'm going to split down the middle on this. I think they'll be a bit tighter defensively because a draw for them is okay anyway. Championship favourite score like one of them. I'm going to go to Norwich to bounce. But I think, yes, they, if they weren't promoted already before the game against Bournemouth, I think they would have gone and won, won the game, get over the line themselves doing it. But the job was already done for them. And kind of, they laboured their way. And obviously, Bournemouth took advantage of that. So you, they, they knew they were going to relax from that. And also, the red card in the first half oh, it made a difference to the scoreline as well. Watford, on the other hand, yeah, they were really, really bad. And... If Luton took their chances in the first half, they could have been four or five down. But yeah, Norwich are going to win this game 2 0. Up next, deep though, it is Preston North End versus Derby County. Charlie Betts, Derby teamed around and won their games. They've lost their game, but Chris and Robin lost their game. Yeah, I think we will reserve our comments on maybe the tenure of Derby's both managers that they've had so far this season to the end of the season. However, it is looking very, very, very spicy down at them and Rotherham. I think we'll get on to other teams in a minute. It's pretty much a straight shootout between them two now, it seems. You talk about one of the worst teams at home of late against one of the worst teams away from home of late. Derby will be at fourth from bottom, but haven't won in the last five. So I really don't know where you go with this. That's going to hurt them because Blackburn will be a similar vein to, to Preston in the way they play, the way they approach the game, and the fact that they've got anything to play for. So that worries me is that if I was a Derby fan, I'd be a bit worried about that performance on Friday night. And if I'm being brutally honest, I can see it happening again. What might save them, is if we'll go on to them in a minute, is maybe Rotherham's fixtures. We spoke about the number, but also who they're playing. So they might be, almost start by default, for the want of a better phrase. 
But I don't think they'll do it by winning a lot of games, which is obviously a prediction I made about another team, which will be no doubt discussed in a bit. So I'm going to go for Preston to win the repeat of Friday night, two goals to one. Derby, we bit getting a bit desperate now to get results. We might go a bit gun ho and they might get caught at the back on the counter. But this is a Preston side that have been so inconsistent. I think we said it since match day five of how inconsistent Preston have been. But to be fair, they actually get to pick up a clean sheet at the weekend. So you've got to give them a little bit of praise for that. So I think Preston are going to win this game. I'm going by the odd goal, one goal to nil. Cody? I was so sure the score I had in my head would not be available by the third game. Derby, I think it'll be the complete opposite of what you said, Craig. I think they have to get a point. And I think they know with the Rotherham fixture congestion that probably one or two more draws is enough because I don't see Rotherham winning more than two games. So I think Derby are going to play for a draw. Preston at home have been largely toothless all season. So I've got to go for nil-nil. Hillsborough, Shepherd Wednesday versus Blackburn. No Darren Moore, obviously under touchline. We wish him a speedy recovery. Charlie, they had the opportunity to take the lead against Bristol City. They didn't take advantage of that. Missed a penalty from Barry Bannon. Do you think that's it now? Yeah, they're done. The shame is, is if, if you were to epitomise probably Wednesday's season in one 90-minute display, it was probably that. Moments of brilliance, moments of abject, well, an absent defence, for want of a better phrase, and then missed key opportunities. And that's the thing. You can go, you, I mean, there's so many watershed moments, but obviously as Luton fans, you'll remember that half, you know, that half time against Luton, for example. For me, that's probably when it turned a bit for them, you know, that, that you know, to lose their game the way they did. And there's been too many of those. And this, this is another one at the weekend. So, yeah, unfortunately, and we've, you know, we spoke about other parts of, of the club, but I can't see them staying up now. I think they're done. I've got no idea how to predict the score in this, but one thing I will guarantee you is neither team will keep a clean sheet. I'm going to have to go for another thriller just because the two teams are so absent in defence. So I'm going to go for two goals each, two all. Cody? I don't really know what score to go for in truth because... As Charlie said, Sheffield Wednesday, a goal up, 70 minutes against 10 men, dominated the game, had so many chances. And I think there's some of the things that the fans have said throughout is they've actually played all right under Darren Moore. But defensively, every time someone attacks them, which hasn't even been that often, they look like conceding. So I can't see them winning a game. As we said before the weekend, I think not winning that game sends them down. Blackburn got a good win. They've started scoring goals again after a sticky spell. So... I just think they'll have too much quality up front, particularly with Sheffield Wednesday's back line. 3-1 Blackburn. Yeah, I don't know about this game because Blackburn have been awful, but they did pick up a very good victory on Friday night against Derby. Wednesday, yeah, that's a hammer blow. Real hammer blow because they did have an opportunity, didn't take the chances. And I think that's been the same thing as Charlie said about the Luton game. There have been other times this season where they've had chances and not taken the chances and paid the price for it. And they paid the price for this one again, even just picking up a point. But I'm going to go with the championship's favourite scoreline. No, I can't see either team winning, really. So I'm going to go for 1-1. One, one. Up next, at the Liberty Stadium, it is Swansea City versus Queen's Park Rangers. Cody, Swansea, to be fair to them, they came back from 2-0 down to level the game. But that doesn't help at all. No, and let's be fair. We might later on in the episode get some of Charlie's slightly less successful predictions over the weekend. <laughs> but... He did say that Swansea's defence was concerning, the fact that they conceded chances. And they conceded 15 chances to a Wickham side that very scarcely have had anywhere near 15 chances in any game this season. Certainly not the form of promotion candidates. It's probably with Watford losing, if they'd won that, they could have put a little bit of pressure on. But now they're probably looking the other way out of the playoffs. QPR, oh, to be fair, we said they're going on holiday and we all agreed it. And they've been pretty good since. They dug in with 10 men for the last half an hour. Got a great result against Middlesbrough. Now they've ended that away form. I can see them nicking another one. So I'm going to go for QPR to win by two goals to one. I think Swansea, I know they got the two wins against sides that either were at the bottom or didn't have much to play for. But they've not inspired for a good month and a half now. Charlie? Oh, I don't know. I see what you mean. I mean, if you're Swansea, do you start looking at, we're probably going to have to go through the playoffs. Do you start looking at rotating players a little bit? I know it's probably a bit too early. Maybe one or two games too early for that. But it has to, to come into account when we start predicting some of the later fixtures. I think, I think they are bound for the playoffs now. Then they're not in good enough form, I think, to catch Watford. The thing in QPR, though, you know, they've had two losses, then two wins, a draw. So should you go for a second draw? So that made two of each. And then away from home, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. So I don't know. There's certainly an algorithm to them, but they have been better since they've, they've not had any pressure on them. So I think I might have to go for the loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. And I'm going to go for a draw this time. Again, I've gone quite a few today, but no, I'm going to bottle it. QPR win by 3 0. Pressure will get to him. Well, Swansea are missing uh, Andre Ayew. went down pretty early in the game and they clearly missed him. Yeah, QPR, 
Yeah, as Cody said, we, we uh, doubted them against Barra and they scored two worldies. So credit where credit's due to uh, Marv Walton's side. But Swansea, I think just about, because they're just the inconsistencies of QPR, I'm just going to go them to shade it by one goal to nil. Right up next, it is Millwall versus Bournemouth on Wednesday. Daniel Cody, to be fair to Bournemouth, take full advantage of Norwich's lapse in concentration. Yeah, they were brilliant. And to be fair, they have been for a long time. Jonathan Woodgate deserved credit because a lot of people, us included, doubted him. And it's not just the fact that they're winning games. They're playing good football. They're scoring goals galore. They're not conceding more than one a game. And it's a fantastic formula. I still think they'll nick third and I can't look past them for a win. It's just what score. 2-1 Bournemouth. This is probably the first game we're going to actually go all the way. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go wild this one. I'm going to go 3 0 Bournemouth. I don't know why. Mill already conceded three at home. Yeah, I'm going to go 3 0 Bournemouth. Jolly. Yeah, it's tough because two games ago, I had Mill down as a possible dark horse to maybe sneak in the playoffs. But the last two match days, unfortunately, put paid to that. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, obviously, Bournemouth, fantastic role against 10 for most of the game. But I've got to be honest, I'll, I'll eat the humble pie with the drum from Woodgate. However, again, I think it was an informed decision that we made because, let's be honest, that bar it probably didn't work out the way we wanted and that's what we, we were sort of using as a, a foundation to build from. However, seems like he's learned from that experience. And Millwall, when they lose, they don't. They very rarely score. So if I'm backing a Bournemouth win, I have to back them to keep a clean sheet. But Millwall do tend to come to play for a draw, even if they're on holiday. So I think Bournemouth might have too much for them. 1-0 Bournemouth. Up next, it is Rotherham United versus Millsborough. <sighs> Charlie, Rotherham not taking advantage of playing against teams around them. Losing late on to Birmingham. Do you think they're going to get anything out of this game? I think we all agreed that the Birmingham was obviously going to be tougher. You know, we said that after the week they'd had before. So I think anyone who, you know, will give a stick for maybe not predicting that result would, would be a bit harsh. The Coventry one was the one that that's the hammer blow out of all of them, to be honest, because as great as it was being QPR in the week, really the, the fact that Coventry were around them and let them get away is, is a worry. However, however, and this is the NFL caveat, they are playing a Middlesbrough side that are woefully out of form. Not one in the last five. So I think Rotherham will win. I think the championship this season has has got it in. It's had so many twists and turns already in the sense of managers, you know, results, some big ones that happened over the weekend. We are. I mentioned it the other day. We are in that territory of some freaky results appearing, and you know the the sort of performance is going a bit haywire as we get closer to the summer. So I think Rotherham will pick up a win on this. Whether they'll stay up, we'll talk about another time. I think they'll win this one by, and I'm going to go big on this because I think Borough uh, just not interested now. Three goals to one. Three one Rotherham. Cody. Yeah, I kind of understand it because Middlesbrough have been one of the worst form sides in the league in the last few weeks of the season. The problem is, I mean, of all the sides to go on holiday, you wouldn't have thought it'd be a Neil Warnock side, but it has happened. Rotherham, I, I get what Charlie's saying. The, the Coventry game on paper is a bigger loss, but the Birmingham one today, they were the better side. They carved out opportunities. They didn't take them. And it's a sucker punch in the last couple of minutes. And that's the thing that worries me. But a bit like I said with Sheffield Wednesday, unsuccessfully a number of times, it's must-win territory now. Like If they lose this game, they're down. So I'm going to go for Rotherham to win by two goals to one. I think every time I've gone for a Rotherham win, they actually haven't won. So I'm going to like play a bit of mind games with myself, and I'm going to go for Millsbury to win one nil. Moving on, it is Stoke City versus Coventry City. Charlie, you didn't think Coventry would get any more points, and they picked up six points since you said that. I know that people have commented on some of the things that I've said. However, up to that point, Coventry had two away wins all season. And you have to remember, I predicted that before the game against Rotherham. Now, I'm not saying that would have changed necessarily, but that win against Rotherham obviously gave them confidence for the, the next one and momentum and things like that at the weekend. However, they've done me, so fair play to them. On that basis, Stoke all over the shop. Possibly, Dan mentioned about Borough being one of the worst form teams at the minute. Stoke are not far behind them. So, I think Coventry might sneak another result. They've got a bit of momentum, a bit of confidence off of those two results. So, 2-0 Coventry City. Daniel Cody. Yeah, I kind of get Charlie's point. I mean, the one thing I will say that made me laugh out of the comments, just for the for the crack of it, was the fact that that one of them slated Charlie for predicting a Rotherham win at home to Coventry and then said that we never should have predicted it, followed by the sentence, that's our first away clean sheet in 18 games, which kind of suggests why Charlie went against it. But I'm glad Coventry have stayed up because I said at the start I wanted them to as much as I didn't think they would because of a lack of firepower. But the most important thing with Coventry the last two games They've gone back to keeping clean sheets, which is what their foundations were built on the first half of the season. They're never big goal scorers, and most of their wins, a bit like Luton on the road earlier in the season, they're reliant on one nils and two nils. I think coming against the Stoke side who are on holiday off the back of two wins, it could work as a positive, or do they work in the sense now that Coventry say, actually, we're safe, we've not got much to play for, we've put in two massive efforts there, 
I think Stoke could nick this one because Coventry, they should be safe now. So fair play to them. 1-0 Stoke. Yeah, Daniel Cody's taking my 1-0 victory to Stoke. I think it's going to be a Michael O'Neill special, though. I'm going to go one more. 2-0 Stoke, I think. Uh, Coventry, yeah, fair play to them. Got the two wins they really needed at the right time. Two clean sheets, massive positive. The only negative I'm going to have for Coventry is they still have loads of chances but not scoring enough. But yeah, they're going to lose that game anyway. 2-0. Up next is Wickham versus Bristol City at Adams Park. Daniel Cody, for the second game running, Wickham had a lead late on. They couldn't hang on to it, and it's cost them dearly. Yeah, it is a bit of a shame, to be honest, because they, they played really well, and they were a good match for Swansea in that game. It wasn't two set pieces, and they were backs against the wall the rest of the game. They gave as good as they got, albeit Swansea weren't in great form. And it just shows the difference, doesn't it? Those extra five points, and they'd be right in the mix now. They wouldn't even be bottom of the championship. So I think we have to say it's curtains for Wickham, but they're up against a side who, well, we've talked about going on holiday, haven't we? And the fact that people like Nigel Pearson, looking for a new contract as well, I think people got the wrong end of the stick with Charlie last week because he loves Nigel Pearson. He just didn't think this was the right fit. And I'm starting to see why. And I might have to eat a bit of humble pie on that one. So I think, do you know what? Wickham are going to go out with a, a final good home victory here. It's going to be 2-1 to Wickham, and I think it'll be good value for it as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree on a Wickham win as well, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, felt, a bit, I felt a bit sorry for Wickham the last few games. I really have. Uh, but I think they're going to win this game. I'm going to go with 3-1 to Wickham. Charlie? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the, the sentiments of what Dan was saying. I, you know, in terms of the Nigel Pearson thing, I, you know, we'll talk about it in the season, but the worry is they haven't won the last five. Whichever way you dress that up and whatever way you want to look at that, they have drawn quite a lot away from home. So that's the only thing that's playing in the back of my mind. I completely agree with what you two are saying about Wickham and the woeful form of Bristol City. But draw away from home again, Bristol City. One each, one of championship folks score. Right, next up at St Andrews, it is Birmingham City versus Nottingham Forest. Uh, Daniel Cove, we just spoke about that late winner from uh, Harley Dean for Birmingham. That, that should be enough for them. And you have to give Lee Burrow a lot of credit. Yeah, he's made an instant impact. And he did do the same at Charlton, to be fair. Early on, he was very good. And I'm more annoyed. And I know it's not the question you asked me, so I apologise. And Nottingham Forest, because I did say that Huddersfield were the side that were going to get drawn towards it. And if ever you could have asked for a gift, I mean, Nottingham Forest, just put it on a plate for Huddersfield. It was a really frustrating game. Nottingham Forest are now in a situation where I have to think, are they on the beach as well? I'm going to go for... To a piece, because I think this is going to be one like Charlie said, where they're just going to go all action because no one's got anything to play for now. And Forrest might even start scoring again. I think if Birmingham lost today uh, against Rotherham, I, I, I might have said this could be a really potential banana skin for Birmingham. But as they've won the game, probably got enough in the tank now just to get over the line. I could see them win this game against me. So I'm going to go over the same score line as they won today with a 1 0 victory. Charlie. Oh, I don't know. I normally have to back Forest, but I have to quite apply a little bit of logic to it, albeit that hasn't worked me all year. It's tough. For a 16 shots, free on target, that's pretty woeful. For, for I mean, keep talking about it. Maybe we're the ones who are wrong for saying the quality of striker they got, but that is that is pretty bad, to be honest. And then Birmingham, away at home, sorry, free on the bounce, they've won. And when they have won, they've generally kept a clean sheet. And with Forest in potency, I think I have to let, say Birmingham get a clean sheet. Which how many Birmingham get? They generally get two at home, so I'm going to go for that pattern. 2-0 Birmingham. So Yorkshire Derby... Up in Huddersfield, they are playing Barnsley. Charlie, Barnsley losing at the wrong time as well. Puts a bit of pressure on them. Got a little bit of a cushion with a four-point gap over Reading, but an ideally not that result they really wanted. No, if I'm honest, and, and you know, Dan's, I think Dan mentioned it about, the, you know, we had a number of teams, but he mentioned Barnsley the other day, that just when they get thrown under the spotlight, quite a few teams in and around that playoff picture have bowled it. And I don't like that term, but maybe, that's, you know, you could reword it as a faulted under the pressure. But Huddersfield have been better at home. They've been, you know, mid-table in terms of form. Surely now Huddersfield is safe. The, the the handbrake comes off a little bit and Barnsley must have enough to be able to pick them off. I mean, Daryl DK obviously has been in, in pretty impressive form so far. Is this the defence that he can probably get work a bit of space? And I'm going to go for yes. I think now that they've buzzed, they've got that cushion because of Reading's result of the weekend, I think it gives them a little bit of freedom as well. So I think it'll be an end-to-end -end game. I think there'll be a lot of goal mouth action. And I'm going to go for a bit of a barnstorming 3-1 win for Barnsley. Uh, I just literally wrote down 3-1 to Barnsley for myself, <laughs> uh, thinking Charlie will never go for 3-1 to Barnsley. But good win for Huddersfield, first of all, against Forest, as, Ch as Cody alluded to in the last game. Barnsley picking up the odd defeats at the wrong time. When we said there should be any pressure on them, because Redden will be right on their tails now. 
But I think Barnsley should win this game. I'm not going to go three-one as Charlie Puddy. I'm going to go for two-one instead. Cody. Well, I've got to go the opposite way, to be honest. I think the the handbrake off for Huddersfield, as you mentioned, and at home earlier in the season, they were very good. Bar Bournemouth, they've still been getting results at home recently. And Barnsley, the pressure's a scary thing. I will just say very quickly, it's the first time that game today against Coventry where Charlie should have applied his 1-0 up and then get one on the counter late on for the 2-0 <laughs> win in stoppage time. But <laughs> it happened when he didn't go for it. But I, I really worry for Barnsley now. Reading four points behind, it's going to be such a tense finish between those two. I think Huddersfield will win, and I think they'll win handsomely. I'm going to go for three goals to one to Huddersfield. And the final game at Kenworth Road, it is Luton Town versus Reading. Daniel Cody, Derby the Light. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic performance. Quite Honestly, it's one of the best performances from Luton all season, probably since they've been back in the Championship. It just carried the momentum from the last 10 minutes of the Wickham game, really. Took it straight in. Looked like it meant more to them, which is weird considering Watford could have stayed in the title race, really. But I think the problem is in reverse. It was such a big shift from Luton at the weekend. Reading have had an extra day's rest. This game is massive to them. If they win this and Barnsley falter, as I expect them to, there'll be one point between them. So I think I have to back a Reading win. Generally, Luton without fans at home haven't been quite as good. I think it's just going to be too much. After that big shift at the weekend, I'm going to go for Reading to nick it 2-1, just because I think it's so crucial to them. Sorry. Oh, I've got to go down the middle. I completely completely agree with what Dan's saying. However, Reading only one win in the last five, with three draws in that. I mean, away from home, such a mixed bag. Win, loss, draw, win. Oh, I don't know. I do worry a little bit about Reading defensively. I'm, I'm niggling between... A, a, a one-all draw or a sneak to Luton 2-1 win. And I don't know which one to go for. But seeing as I said Barnsley win, I think they'll get an even bigger cushion and the playoffs will slowly start to be decided. So I'm going to go for Luton to win two by two goals to one. I'm going to back them again, Luton. Um, Luton treat, I, I did on the weekend. So that's the, that's the heart there. <laughs> talking, but no, Luton treated it like a derby and they fully deserve to win it. Obviously, the penalty kick, uh, penalty spot moment was a bit disastrous So for them. So two Good wins against your local-ish rivals in this league. Uh, I think they can go for one more and win two nil. And let's have a quick recap of what we just did in match day forty three. I think we've gone quite safe, uh, to be honest. Considering the last uh, weekend's action was lacking goals, I think we've all gone for a tight odd goal here and there. The only ones that like stand out in mind is Charlie's three nil QPR win against Swansea. My former three nil win against Millwall. And Daniel Kay's gone big because he's gone for his two free ones. It's Sheffield Wednesday, Blackburn, and Huddersfield will be Barnsley. And those are our predictions for the final full midweek of the championship season. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comment section down there. And give us your thoughts on these fixtures. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.